This morning, we're starting a new series. Um, starting a new series this morning on developing a reading culture. Developing a reading culture. So, you're welcome to another amazing series. We just wrapped up our first series for the year, and this will be another two-part series. And after the um, series, we'll be able to take time to also have um, um, answer a few questions. Now, it's very, very important for us to always uh, revisit the reason why we do what we do so that as new people join us, they will get clarity. And then for those that are already part of the house, it'll just be like a reference and a reminder. The first service in this house is known as success, business, and leadership service. And it's an offshoot of our success, business, and leadership school. And now, the purpose of this service is to be able to create an opportunity for equipping, for educating, for empowering people to have all-round success. So when it comes to the area of success, when it comes to the area of business, when it comes to the area of leadership, and excelling, and having a holistic progress in your life, that's what this service is all about. So it's a place where we teach you things that will help you to become successful. And one of the uh, major ingredients uh, that will help you to become great in life uh, is what we want to explore uh, in this series, developing a reading culture. In Daniel chapter 2 and verse number 9, the Bible says, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books. I, Daniel, understood by what? By books. The number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that it will accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. What had happened was, if you read the book of Jeremiah, God has spoken through the prophet Jeremiah that his people will be in captivity for 70 years. And after 70 years of captivity, they will be brought out of captivity. Now, they went into captivity. 70 years came and left. They were still in captivity. Why? Nobody knew. Nobody read the prophecy. Those that were alive when the prophecy came are no more alive. Do you understand? They were no more alive. If you, uh, My wife and I were having a biblical discussion um, about two days ago, and yesterday the discussion was answered. Now, she, she asked me, say, come, that as I'm reading this thing, they say another pharaoh came that did not know Joseph. How come a pharaoh will come that doesn't know Joseph? That I, I, I did not in the same place. So we're discussing different possibilities and reasons why it's possible for a pharaoh not to know Joseph. And then yesterday she called me because she was in uh, um, the, well, she was reading somewhere else. And she called me, ah, that, that thing we're discussing, that you see, the, this, the, there's 300 years between this and this, so it's possible that do I even know what happened in Nigeria 100 years ago? Do I, I say, mm -hmm. I say, that's an encounter with God. I say, that's what the word of God is all about. You ask a question, you are trying to, and God, so as you continue to grow, you continue to learn. So these guys, nobody read the prophecy to even know that 70 years have come and gone and they were supposed to be free. Then Daniel picked up the books and saw it and said, ah, this captivity cannot hold us anymore. And he began to pray. He began to call upon the Lord. Why was he able to get that understanding? Books. Somebody say books. books. Somebody say books. books. Somebody say books. books. So developing, as we have seen, when you say developing a reading culture, means that having a reading culture is not automatic. You are not born loving books. <laughs> Hello? You are not born loving books. It's not automatic that you just wake up and say, I love books, I love books. No. So developing a reading culture means that you must consciously and intentionally come to a place where you decide knowledge is power, knowledge is important, and I will give myself to the acquisition of knowledge. And you begin to discipline yourself in order to be able to achieve what you know is right. Hello, somebody. Now listen to me. If you don't appreciate knowledge, you will not go after it. You won't. Whatever you don't value, you don't pursue. Whatever you don't value, you don't pursue. 
So if you don't value knowledge and appreciate knowledge and understand the vital part that knowledge and information plays in your life, in your existence, and in the success equation of your destiny, you will not do it. You won't go after it. So let's begin by looking at five vital facts that you need to note. Five vital facts that you need to note. Number one, where you will be in five years will be determined by the books you read and the friends you keep. Where you will be in five years will be determined by the books you read, information, and the friends you keep, association. The books you read is all about the information you acquire. The friends you keep is all about the association you are part of. So it therefore means that your information and your association determines your destination. Your information and your association determines your destination. Listing and listing well. If you don't like where you are now, change your information, change your association. Hello? Just look back into your life. In the last five years, who have you been associating with? In the last five years, what information have you been exposed to? Those two things, the information you've been exposed to, information you've been exposed to in the last five years, the association you've been part of in the last five years, they are all the reason why you are where you are today. So if you don't like where you are today, make up your mind and say from today, from this year, I want to begin to acquire the right information and I want to change my association. Who are, you, who are the five closest people to you? They determine your future. Sit down and think, who are the five closest people I have around me? Look at their life. Look at your life. Hello? So number one, where you will be in five years will be determined by what? The books you read, information, and the friends you keep. So information and association is vital to your destination. Number two, these are just few facts I want to lay down as a foundation. One of the most amazing insults that has been unfortunately validated by our action states, if you want to hide anything from a black man, hide it in a book. It's one of the most amazing insults to the black race. But unfortunately, our action is proving it to be true. So if you want to hide anything from a black just put it in the book. You know why? They won't read. They would rather pray. Hello? They will not read. They would rather pray. And that's why many of us are even frustrated in our prayer life. Because you pray the word. You pray what? The word. So you have to read the word, understand the word, and take the word, and take it to God in prayer. But when you don't read the Bible, you don't even understand the basis of your prayer. That's why you can be praying, oh Lord bless me, oh Lord bless me, oh Lord bless me. That's not a prayer. You are already blessed. It's like saying, oh Lord make me a lumine, make me a lumine, oh Lord make me a lumine, oh Lord make me a man. It's a useless prayer, it can never be answered. Hello? When you don't read the Bible, you say, heaven help those who help themselves. It's not in the Bible. You'll be quoting philosophy. Why? Because you don't read the Bible. Any prayer that is not based on the word is a wasteful thinking. You're just wasting your time. But when you read the word, you are able to say, Lord, it is written. You said in your word. It is written. You said in your word. And when you bring his word before him, he say, God has exalted his word even above his name. So he has no choice. He himself will bow. He bound himself to bow to his own word. Hello? Proverbs 23, 23. Proverbs 23, 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom and instructions and understanding. Buy the truth. Do everything you can to acquire it. Don't buy the truth. So when we are recommending books of the month, 
We're recommending tapes. Buy this, buy that. It's for your benefit. Please answer the question. If you read the book, is it in my mind? If you read the book, is it in my spirit? Ah, you are the one reading it now. You are the one reading it. You are the one benefiting from it. Will I come and take the knowledge from you? No, it's going to be there. But what you don't know, you don't know. Hello? If you are big, you are big. If you are small, you are small. <laughs> what you don't know, you don't know. Look at a few other translations of the same verse. Buy truth. Don't sell it for love or money. Can you see now? So truth is greater than love and money. It's what? Greater than love and money. Don't sell it for love or money. Buy wisdom. Buy education. Buy insights. Hello? Buy wisdom. Buy education. Buy insights. Oh, you know, Entrepreneurship Academy is two weeks. I'm working. I don't have time to be able to take two weeks off. Now it's online. Now it's promo, $10. How much is $10? Maybe 5000 or whatever. You pay. Now you can now sit down in the comfort of your house and go through the Entrepreneurship Academy at your own pace and get the knowledge that has been existing before your trouble came. Number three, readers are leaders. Readers are what? Leaders. So if you see any great or successful leader in any field or aspect of life, they are found to be people who read. Readers are what? Leaders. Readers are what? Leaders. Anybody you see in any field of life, any sphere of life, that is doing amazing. They are reading, you know. I hope you know everybody is not born again. And I hope you know when we are talking of reading, we are not talking Bible. We are talking reading generally. You will be amazed at the level of reading that people are doing. Reading books to put others in bondage. Hello? They are reading the art of war. Sun Tzu. They are reading 48 laws of power. They are reading Machiavellian principles of management. And they are reading how to keep people in bondage. Hello? A man wanted to contest for local government chairman in one of the southwestern states of our country. And then he brought 100, you know, the Palasa phone, 5,000 naira phone. He brought 100 and he was sharing. Other politician called him and said, Stop that! It's an error. Biscuit and moth. Can you be giving them for you? are increasing the tempo. They will now begin to desire them less. Those are biscuits. Biscuits. Hello? They keep them at the level of biscuits. Because poverty has been weaponized. Package. So there is no more area boy. It's National Union of Road Transport. Workers, the package. There's no more area boy. It's car. They give them uniform, package it, weaponize, so that when the time comes to release them, they are released. Hello, my wife is a politician, you know. And when they go for their meeting, sometimes like ah, she will come back with two biscuits, you know, as in biscuit two, two. That for five dollars, two. And one month, as well as ah, that they share. I say ah, so. And you must collect everybody, they will share it to the two, two. You bring one carton of biscuits, it's like you have brought heaven and earth. Everybody is sharing. The level of poverty, the level they have kept people here. You think people are not reading? They are reading on how to keep you down. So if you like, don't read on how to come out. When Jeremiah got the prophecy that they'll be there for 70 years, do you think the people that kept them in body were not out there? They were praying, you will never discover it. And there are people praying you will remain down. Check Laban and Jacob. You think Laban did not know that he was defrauding Jacob when you are changing somebody's salary 10 times and it's not upward review, it's downward review without corona? It's not that there is lockdown. You started reducing salary 10 times in 20 years. He knew what he was doing. The day Jacob woke up, Laban's yoke was broken. 
this year, I pray you will wake up. Everything that has held you down mentally, spiritually, physically, psychologically, emotionally, it breaks over your life. Leaders are leaders. Luke 4, 16. You see that Jesus was a leader. So he came to Jerusalem, uh, he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. As his custom was, he stood up to read. So it's part of, it's a custom. When he comes, he just begins to read. That's why at the age of 12, he sat down, a 12-year-old boy, and doctors, lawyers, philosophers, when they heard him speak, they said, what manner of wisdom is this? 12-year-old boy. Why? His custom was to read. So nobody's too young to read, though. Hello? All my mini books, I said, yeah, start reading. Yeah, my book, yeah, read. Come and tell me what you saw there. Come and, ah, there. Hello? Nobody's too young to read. Because if you give a one-year-old money, they know it's money. One-year-old. Give them paper. They know that. Money, money, money. The same way they should be able to know chapter, verses. Hello? As his custom was. Look at it from the message translation. He came to Nazareth where he was being reared. As he always did on the Sabbath, he went to the meeting place when he stood up, to, as he always did. So it's a culture for Jesus. Look at the New Living Translation of the same verse. When he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual, as usual, to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scripture. So it's a normal thing, as usual. You just know that. That's him. You just know. Paul was a leader. He wrote to third of the New Testament. You can't be a good author if you are not a leader. You can't be a good author if you are not a leader. If you don't read, why? You can't. You, that's why some people say, I've been trying to write a book, a writer's block, and write it. It's because you, if you are a leader, you have too much information. You'll be so loaded. You will have drawn from multiple graces. That when it's time to write, all the graces will go to work to help you find your own grace. So, look at Paul, 2 Timothy 4.13. Bring the winter coats I left in trust with couples. Also, the what? The books and parchment notebooks. He was in prison. He sent to his son Timothy, he said, please, 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 uh, go to trust. See, Kapos, there's a winter coat I kept there. I need that coat. The winter year is much. But please, also bring my books and my notebooks. Also bring my what? My books and my notebooks. A man in prison wrote to third of the New Testament, even more than those that are not in prison. Hello? I told you, in the midst of the lockdown, I wrote four books and two manuals. Four books Two manuals, 2020. So, if you like, say there is lockdown. If they lock down, did they lock down your hand? Did they lock down your brain? Did they lock down your dream? Hello? There were all kinds of free courses. You heard the brother testifying here how many courses he completed with Harvard? Free courses online. You sat down at home watching Telemundo. Free courses online. Lockdown did not lock down your destiny. Hello? Crisis creates opportunities. So in the midst of that crisis, what opportunities did you explore? There are people that developed new skills, rebranded themselves. In the midst of the lockdown, it's said that they lockdown, lockdown. I kept telling you, the covenant is not on lockdown. Faith is not on lockdown. The kingdom of God is not on lockdown. Prayer is not on lockdown. Worship is not on lockdown. Your destiny is not on lockdown. I kept telling you. A prisoner, a man in prison. Look at the amplifier. It says, when you come, bring the cloak I left at trust with Kapos. Also the books, especially the parchment. My notebook so that I can take notes. I want to write things. Why? Because when you are loaded with information, as you read, you write. 
As you read, you write. So Jesus was a reader. Paul was a reader. I am a reader. When people say, ah, hey, this man has wisdom, I just laugh. I don't have wisdom. God has wisdom. But as I draw on the wisdom of God and I read and I read and I read, it will be difficult. You see, I got born again as a teenager. This pastor, I didn't go to Bible school. I went to Bible school after I became a pastor. That's when I started going to different schools after. So many things I know, it was by reading because nobody taught us how to do it. In our days, they would just tell you the law, just believe God. When you go to some fathers, you will, you will leave their office confused. They will never tell you the truth. They, this is the way, this is what I did though. They will not tell you anything. As, as little as how to tie to message, how to do a conference, how to do publicity, they will just say, just God, God is in control. God, 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 God. It's a mystery, the mystery. Man. They don't make everything look superfluous. Thank God for books. Thank God for tapes. Thank God for exposure to seminars and conferences. I kept learning, I kept learning, I kept learning. As a young boy in ministry, no guidance, no direction. When I even finally now went to the Bible school, it was confusion. Because I discovered that there were Bible cemetery, not seminary, and every, I don't even know which one. Because the, all the things they were teaching is outdated, archaic, irrelevant. Biblical homiletics, pastoral homiletics, humanities. I'm like in the Bible in this Hello, I've read an average of one book per week for what, about 30 years now. One book every week. Today is January 17. I started my fourth book yesterday. Book number four, yesterday. Book number four, January 17. The month has not ended. And I'm still preaching. And that's this week alone, I have done like three contracts and MOU of about everything, about over 100 pages that I had to still read and check for clauses and write and send to directors. And so it's not just in the midst of that. Me too, I went to social media. Do you understand? I still have to, because now I'm tweeting every day now. My, my Twitter has been on lockdown for a while, so it has, it has been released. So every day now I'm doing one tweet per day just to begin to wake the thing up. So I'm, I'm fourth book yesterday. And yeah, 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 yeah. Even Bible, when you have not read Bible, it's clear. We gave you prayer point, you are not praying. Who did this to you? Who did this to you? Hallelujah. Number four. Let me just finish this five other fact. We'll continue next week. Uh, we'll continue in part two. Reading is to your mind what exercise is to your body. Reading is to your mind what exercise is to your body. You see, when you see some people that are beginning to have headache over 100,000, the coaching I did yesterday, see, because I don't understand all these guys, the kind of things they are handling, and the kind of, you see, but I, I, I say capacity, a 5kVA generator can never power a 20kVA load. It won't happen. If you carry, I better, I better pass my neighbor and decide to use it to power a whole flat or duplex. When you put it on, it will be working. By the time you put the load on it, to just shut down. That's what happens. When your brain and your capacity is low, as things are increasing, you are shutting down, you start falling sick, you start getting tired, you start getting depressed because you don't have capacity. Your capacity is too low. You are operating low capacity. So reading, the way you do exercise and you bring out six pack, two pack, one pack, 17 pack, that's the same way you exercise your brain with reading and knowledge and then you have six packs in your brain. So that when, even though you may have one pack in the physical, in the brain, when you open your mouth like this, by the time I was through, the guy said, he said, but how do you people come up? He said, all these things you have explained now. I can see it as you are saying it. But how do you think like that as a go a year? It's depths. Hello? Read your Bible. Great are your works, O God. Thy thoughts are very deep. Great are your works, O God. Thy thoughts are very deep. Deep thoughts produces great works. If you think deep, 
you will not be small. Listen to me. If you want to plant corn, what do you do? You can put your finger in the ground and put it there. If you want to bury a chicken, you have to go deeper than that. If you want to see water, you have to go deeper than that. If you want to get oil, you have to go deeper than that. So the deeper you go, the more valuable what you connect to. So if you are staying with the corn, corn does not produce. Once it comes up, within a few months, you will harvest. But that's the end. It's different from somebody that is going to dig a well that will be there for the next 30 years. Or crude oil. So you've got to read and exercise your mind. Because that's the dichotomy between physical labor and mental labor. Some people are physically strong, but mentally. I have a guy that was working with us, BSC older. But this guy, anything mental, backward. But Kogbe Pali, Karikaton, do stock taking, and when she had bana, things that require energy, the guy is there. But when it's time to think, 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 his brain can work. Physical energy mental deficiency. I've told you over and over again the head is the headquarters. Whatever this head cannot handle, your future cannot see. The head is the headquarters. So you cannot have an analog mind in the digital world, it will work. You cannot have an analog mind in the digital world. You need to read. And finally, number five. Reading books commensurate to your age in any area. Reading books commensurate to your age in any area that you wish to be successful in is a secret weapon. Reading books commensurate to your age in any area you desire to be successful in, is what? A secret weapon. What do I mean by that? You want to be successful in an area? Question one, how old are you? Question one, how old are you? So once you know your age, oh, I'm 28 years old, and I want to be successful in marriage, you must read 28 books on relationship. Why? When you read 28 books on relationship as a 28-year-old young man or young woman, it will be too difficult for you to be ignorant in that school of marriage. Because by reading 28 books, you will have been loaded with diverse information. Do you understand? You are 36 years old. You want to succeed in ministry. Gather 36 books on different areas of ministry and read wide. You will be knowledgeable on what to do. Hello, I hope you know, if you say, oh Lord, I need healing anointing, I need healing anointing, you are 32 years old, go and gather books on healing, 32. By the time you start reading, 32 books on healing, anywhere you go, you will be seeing healing, 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 healing. You will even be laying hands on inanimate objects, be healed. Your car is due to this, be healed, because you are loaded. Hello? You want to succeed in finances? Gather the number of books commensurate to your age on finances and begin to read. Because once you become loaded, true change begins on the inside. Your inside will have changed and it's begin to propel your external move. It is my prayer that this year your hunger and your thirst for knowledge will become greater than your complacency. Your hunger and your thirst for knowledge will propel you to deeper dimensions of insight. In the name of Jesus.